Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be creating a projectile system. So I'm going to show you how to create multiple different types of projectiles that you can shoot, like an arrow, magic spells, bombs, bullets, really anything that uh, fits in your game. And we're going to be combining it with our damage system tutorial from last time to create something that looks like this. So let's get started. All right, so I'm starting here with a blank project um, because I don't need anything from the first or third person or anything like that, uh, but I'm going to enable the starter content. Uh, so once you create a blank project, you see this uh, open world. Uh, also two things to note is I'm, I'm also using the Infinity Blade and uh, Paragon Gideon assets. So these are uh, free on the asset store because they have some uh, cool effects that, uh, that I want to use. Uh, I'm going to leave a link down in the description if you want to use them for your own project as well. All right, so uh, back in our editor. Uh, now, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a demo map uh, because this open world is just too big. Um, so go here and create new level, create a basic level. Uh, I'm going to save this in a new folder called maps. And let's just call this demo. All right, next up, uh, we want to create a new folder called project tiles. And this is where it's going to hold everything related to our project tiles. And the first thing we want to create is a blueprint class of type actor and call this BP project tile base. Now, why did I call it base? Uh, because it's going to be a base class. It's going to be a parent class for all other project tiles to inherit from. So it's going to contain everything that's common between every different type of project tile. So first thing to do is well, first thing to do is see um, what's going to be common for all project tiles. So over here on the left in our components, uh, let's add a box collision. Um, yeah, and just call it box collision. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Uh, make sure to drag this onto your default scene route so that this collision is now your new default uh, route. Next thing we want to add is a static mesh. Uh, now, not all projectiles will need a mesh, but we can always disable it in a child uh, class. Um, and we'll come for now. Let's add just a I don't know a sphere as our test mesh. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Oh, and disable this. Um, and we want our box extends to match our mesh or whatever we add here. So let me just change the perspective here to front. Go to our box collision and modify the extents so that they match perfectly with our sphere. And let's go over here to the left and edit that as well. All right, so this looks nice. Now, for this to be a project tile, it has to move, of course. And what makes project tiles move is a component called project tile movement component. Now, this project tile movement component allows you to edit things like speed, uh, gravity scale, bounciness, friction, and so on. For now, we just care about the initial speed, max speed, and gravity. Um, so if I click simulate, what happens now is this just falls. And the reason this happens is because our gravity is set to one. Um, if I set gravity to zero, that means I'm disabling gravity. Now simulate, nothing happens because we don't have any speed. So let's add like a default speed for both initial and max speed, 500. Now if I click simulation, it's moving. Great. Um, I can also take this and put it into our world here. Now when I click play, oh, it starts moving as well. But you'll notice that in the world, it's hard to see which direction is going to start moving in. So we can go back here and add a arrow. And this arrow is just something for the editor. It doesn't uh, appear uh, in game. Uh, and it's just used to tell you like which direction uh, this is moving in. So yeah, here now it's a lot clearer. And if I click play, oh, there's some stuttering going on. But yeah, you can see it moving. 
Um, all right, so what else do we need for our uh, project tile? Now, maybe we want this uh, these default speed that we added and the gravity as well to be editable per instance. What does that mean? It means that if I have maybe two of these, maybe I want this one to go at 500, this one to go at 1000 or different speeds. So let's add some variables that we can manipulate per instance. So over here on the left, let's add one variable called speed. That's going to be of type float. Let's add another variable called gravity. It's also going to be of type float. Uh, you can also limit the value of gravity to say between zero and one here in this value range. And you can also put it here in the slider if you want it to be a slider. Now uh, compile and save and add maybe a default value for speed. Now let's use these variables. Over here in the construction script, um, pull from our projectile movement and say set initial speed. And that's going to be our speed variable. And we can also set max speed. I'll just clean, clean this up a bit. And that's also going to be our speed variable. And finally, set gravity. And that's going to be our gravity. Now, you want them both, uh, you want all of these three to be instance editable and expose on spawn so that we can edit it per instance. Uh, and also our speed, instance editable, expose on spawn. And one nice thing I like to do when adding any variable is um, changing the category. So for our speed, let's create, uh, well, let's create a new category, call it projectile settings. And let's use this category for our speed and our gravity. And basically what category does is that it creates a new tab over here uh, to organize your variables. And also you'll notice here, oh, I have to compile. You'll notice here that you have projectile settings uh, as a category as well. Nice. So let's edit this one to be 1000 and this one to be 500. Now, if I press play, nice, this one is going a lot faster than the other one. That's what we want. Great. Um, so one other thing to note is, um, let me just delete one of them. So if I create a, uh, if I just add a cube here, uh -huh. let's move it here. Let's just make a wall. So if I press play now, you'll notice that the projectile just goes right through um, our wall. Now for my, for my game, I want, I want it to be blocked by objects. So I'm going to edit the collision here to be block all dynamic instead of overlap all. Now, depending on your game, maybe you want projectiles to overlap. Uh, if you have like a, a dodge or something like that, where you can dodge away from projectiles, then maybe you want to do overlap. Uh, for my purposes, block is better. Uh, and also for the mesh, go here and say no collision because we don't want collision on both if we do block. Compile and save. Now if I go back here and play, it just hits the wall and stops. Well, great. So that's what we want. Now let's handle what happens when we collide. So if I go over here on my box collision, scroll down, I can click on on component hit. And now I want to define what happens when um, any base projectile collides with something. Now, the first thing I want to do is dispatch an event. So this tells any class that spawns a projectile when a hit event occurred. So go down here to event dispatchers. Let's call it on projectile impact or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this is just going to be called as soon as an impact happens. And we want to pass a few variables as well. We want to pass this hit and we also want to pass the actor that it hit with. Uh, so to do that, let's go back to our event dispatcher and then inputs, let's add two inputs. First one, call it, oh, call it other actor and make this of type actor, object reference. And the other one, let's call it hit. And this will be of type hit results. Great, now we can just pass them here. 
What else do we want to happen when we collide? For now, I want it to explode or disappear or whatever. So I'm just going to call uh, destroy actor. Uh, obviously, you want some effects to be added here or sounds, but we're going to do that just uh, in a few seconds. But let's test this out and see. Now, if I press play, uh, it hit the wall and disappeared. Uh, you didn't see that, it was a bit too fast. So if I play again, hits the wall and is destroyed immediately. Nice. So for now, this is good. Um, uh, this is uh, enough for our base projectile. Uh, let's start building some child uh, projectiles as well. All right, so back here in our content drawer, just right click your base projectile and say create child blueprint class. And let's call this one BP projectile dark energy because I'm going to create a dark energy projectile. Open it up and now let's edit uh, our components. So first of all, I don't need the mesh for this one. So I'm going to go here and say clear. But what I do need is a particle system because these are the effects that I'm using from the uh, Gideon asset pack. So I'm going to go here, select particle system, uh, make this a child of box collision and search here for Gideon projectile. So this is what it looks like. Um, and also I want to just modify the extents of this box a bit, make it a bit longer and move this projectile system just here and move the arrow. All right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, if I take this and put it in my world, it's gonna, I'm gonna delete this one. It's gonna behave exactly like the base projectile because it inherits all the functionality from it. So it hits the wall and is destroyed. All right, so this is how you can create multiple different projectiles using the same base class. So let's see how we can edit different sounds or different effects per projectile. So back here in my base class, uh, before we destroy the actor, we want to play, uh, we want to spawn a particle effect. Again, if you have Niagara system, please make sure to use Niagara effects because yeah, that's the new way of doing VFX, but the ones I have are old, so that's why I'm using particle system. So here I'm going to say spawn emitter uh, at location. And the asset that I'm going to be using is also from the Gideon asset pack called Burden Hit World. And the location here, so if I pull out of the hits and I click uh, break hit results, I have a location. This is where the hit occurred. Um, so now if I play, you'll see that it spawns this effect. Again, play here, there's an effect. The problem is I did this in the base projectile. That means all the projectiles are gonna be using the same effect. And of course we don't want that. So I'm gonna right click, promote this to a variable, call it impact effect. Uh, add a new category for it, call it effects category, compile, and I'm not gonna give it any default. So it's not gonna have a default value, but it's going to be added by our dark energy. So here, um, if I click on the base of the actor, I'm going to find the effects tab. Now I can add my hit world effect. So this will add it for this projectile, but not any other ones that I create. Nice, so we also want a sound because I'm not hearing any sounds. So once an impact happened, let's call play sound at location. And again, same thing here, this sound promote the variable, call it impact sound, add it in the category called sounds. And the location will just be the same location. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, now let's go back to our uh, first compile, go back to our dark energy, 
projectile and let's add this impact sound to be um, what was it called explosion and this explosion sounds like this and it comes with the starter pack now let's see what that looks like play one more time very nice so let's create um, yeah, so this is basically it for this dark energy projectile. Now let's create another one. Um, I can either duplicate this one or right click, create blueprint class, whichever you like. So I'm going to create a child here, call this BP projectile arrow. I'll actually call it fire arrow because it's uh, gonna be a fire arrow. All right, open this up. Um, now, I don't have a arrow mesh, so I'm just gonna use, um, I don't know, some uh, cube. And I'm gonna scale this cube a bit. Um, with eight, zero point, zero one, yeah. So this is gonna be my arrow. Uh, and of course, we need to edit the box extents as well to fit the arrow. Oh, editing the wrong one. Yep. And go to the front. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, this is the other arrow. Um, yeah, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, so this is good. Uh, but I also want to add some uh, trail effect behind this to make it look like a fire arrow. So I'm going to add also particle system uh -huh, and call this trail. Make it a bit to the back. And this one is from the Infinity Blade Asset Pack. It's called uh, Fireball uh, Base Trail. Um, and also don't forget to edit your uh, impact effect and impact sound. So the impact effect that I want is an explosion. Again, this is from the starter pack. And the impact sound, let's just use explosion again. All right, so let me come here and add this arrow. Move it a bit back so you see what it looks like. All right, not sure if you were able to see that. Let me play again. Yeah, so they're both playing the same, both playing the same sound right now, but different effects. And of course I can still control the speed, the gravity. Um, so if I move this a bit up like here, oh, I'm moving both of them, that's fine. Uh, so if I edit the gravity for this one, say it's 0.3 and the speed is a thousand, now let's see what that looks like. Well, I made the speed 100, not 1,000. Okay, now it's 1,000. So you can see that it falls down because there's some gravity to it. Um, one thing you can also do is, uh, so you notice that it's not changing the rotation of the arrow uh, while it's falling. So to change the rotation, you go here and search for rotate and click on rotation follows velocity. Now, again, if I play here, that looks more like an arrow now. Nice. Um, I'm gonna create one more projectile and then we will add some more functionality to them. So I'm going to Right click, create child blueprint class, call this one projectile ice. So I'm gonna go here. Um, again, don't need a mesh for this one, so I'm just gonna clear it. And I'm gonna add a particle system. make it a child of the box collision. And this one I'm gonna use elemental ice projectile. And that's what it looks like. And this is also from the Infinity Blade uh, effects asset pack. Uh -huh. uh, edit the box collision extents. 
Mm -hmm. Something like that. Let me move the arrow here. Mm -hmm. And go to the front. Yeah, something like that. So these are the extents of this one. Uh, and for the sounds, uh, well, for the effect, I have some ice uh, explosion effect, again, from the Infinity Blade effects. And the sound, uh, I heard a sound that came with the engine that sounded, um, sounded nice. It was Possess Player, yeah, this one. So it sounds sounds like an ice explosion. I'm just going to use this one. Uh, again, this is just for a demo, so it doesn't really matter. And let's put in our ice projectile here and see what it looks like. Oh, again, some stutter. Eh, it looks nice. Lots of projectiles. Great. Now what we want to add is a targeting system. So right now you can see the projectiles, they just move um, straight. So if I rotate this one, for example, and I play, then it's going to keep moving where uh, in the direction it was pointing at. But what if we wanted to move uh, to find the target and go to that target, not keep homing around the target, but just find its location or initial location and go to it. Um, so to do that, um, let's add a target variable to our base here. So I'm going to go to the variables and a variable called target that's going to be of type actor and object reference. Let's add a new category for it, call it target. And this is uh, going to also be instance editable and expose on spawn because we want it the target to be different per uh, instance of this uh, component. Um, all right, so let's actually create an like a dummy enemy for this. So if I go here, uh, let me create a blueprint of type, um, I don't know, character, I'll call it BP enemy. Open this up. I'm not sure if we have a mesh. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure if we have a mesh. And yeah, we have this skeletal mesh. We can use this one. That's fine. Just rotate it to face the arrow. And mm -hmm. great. Now let's add this uh, enemy to our scene. Let's move it here. So right now, maybe I want uh, this um, this ice projectile to find the enemy's location and go to it. Uh, to do that, uh, I'm going to first check uh, in our um, begin play if we have a valid target. So I'm going to get target, right click convert to validated get. So if the target is valid, we want to rotate. I don't need these, so I'm going to delete them. I'm going to create a new custom vent and call it rotate to target. And if is valid, I'm just going to call this event rotate to target. Now, an important thing to know is that you can't just change the rotation of your actor. So I can't say something like set actor rotation um, because the projectile movement, if you hover here, you can read that projectile movement component updates the position of another component. So that means that anything that I change here, rotation or location, will be overridden by the projectile movement. So actually what we want to do is set the velocity of projectile movement because velocity is speed and uh, direction. So how do we get the direction? Well. There is a function called get unit direction, and it takes a from vector and a to vector. So our from vector is get the location from our current actor location to our target's location. So get target, get actor location, and that's our to vector. Now, 
This is just a unit vector, so it's only direction. We now want to multiply it by our speed. So this gives us velocity. Direction times speed. Now, if we have a valid target, we're going to rotate towards that target as soon as we begin play. Well, let's see what that looks like. So this um, this ice uh, projectile, let's point it upwards and play. It obviously is going to go upwards. Now let's keep the rotation the same, but give it a target. So I can click on this pick actor from scene and just click the enemy. Now the target is my enemy. Now if I press play, it found my enemy and it went to it. So it changed its default, its initial uh, look, uh, rotation. Nice. Um, all right, so now if I actually move this enemy, it's not going to follow it. So let me click simulate. Oh, it was too fast. So now, sorry, let me play again. See if I'm moving the enemy, this is still moving in its current uh, direction because it only sets its rotation on begin play and doesn't keep updating it as its targets moving. So what if we do want it to be sort of a homing projectile that follows its target? Well, for that, uh, in our projectile movement, we have an homing uh, boolean. So if we set is homing to true, uh, we can pass in a target to follow. So let's do that. In our construction script, where we set all of our projectile movement variables, let's also check first, um, oh no, we can get our target and convert to a validated get. So if we have a target, and let's add a new variable, call it is homing, because maybe you want a target, but you don't want it to be homing. And this is going to be a Boolean. We can add it in the projectile settings category. So if we have a target, we'll create a branch here, and uh, is homing is set to true, then we want to get our well, we want to get our projectile settings here, and set is homing projectile to true as well. Tidy this up. Uh, one thing we also want to do is modify this homing acceleration magnitude. So this is the uh, velocity of, at which the projectile moves when its target moves. So at zero, that means it's not going to move. So let's set it to something like, uh, I don't know, uh, 2000. And don't forget is homing also should be uh, instance editable and expose on spawn. Now, let me click my ice pick here again and set is homing to true. Great. Now, if I simulate and move, well, it's not homing. Why is it not homing? Let's see. Um, if target is valid and is homing is true, then set is homing. Pro oh, we forgot to set the homing target. So we also have to set homing target component. Yeah. So the target here is not an actor, it's a scene component. So we can get our target actor and get its root because the root is always a scene. Now it should work. Let's try one more time. Yeah, it's following me. It's following me. And it hit me. Great. All right, so um, I created something called a projectile shooter here real quick. Um, this is just a... Um, I don't know, like a like a wall that spawns projectiles. So all it does is that every um, two seconds or every frequency, it spawns a 
project tile that we define here in the project tile types. So we can select any one of our project tiles. And you can set its speed, gravity, and so on. Now the reason I did that is to demo something really important. So let's put our project tile shooter somewhere in the world. Um, let's delete all these other project tiles. We don't need them. And also let's... Uh, so now if I press play, it's supposed to spawn a project tile. Let's see what happens. And nothing's happening because I didn't select a project tile type. Um, let's say, I don't know, fire arrow. Now you can see that it's spawning, but exploding right away. Because of course, when it spawns, it collides with the spawner itself. Now, this will happen if maybe uh, you have a player that's spawning a, an arrow or a project tile. It's, of course, going to collide with the player themselves first. So we want to prevent that from happening. Uh, to do that, back in our project tile base here, on begin play, uh, we're going to call something called ignore actor while moving. And this is going to be on the box collision. Now, ignore actor while moving, set this to true, basically takes an actor here and it um, disables collision with that actor. So the actor here is going to be um, whomever spawned uh, the project tile. So if we go back to our project tile shooter here, you'll see that it has an owner. And this owner is um, a default whenever you spawn an actor from a class. So spawn actor from class here, it will always have an owner. Uh, so I'm gonna set my owner here as self, which is the project tile shooter component. And that way here, I can just say, um, get owner. Compile and save. Now if I go back here, and we're still colliding with the owner. Why? So box collision, ignore actor while moving, target is owner. Um, owner here is self. I am missing something. Oh, this is only called when target is valid. So let's actually move this uh, to be behind. So that's gonna be the first thing it does and then checks if target is valid because obviously if target's not valid, it wasn't gonna go here. Uh, okay, let's try this again. There we go. Now it's spawning our arrows. Uh huh. Great. So I can also um, change this type to be, I don't know, dark energy, make it spawn every second. And you can see that there, there it goes. And of course here I can also change the target to, I don't know, get uh, actor. Uh, get actor of class enemy. I'll just plug this in here. Just doing it very dirty now to see. Yeah, this is how you add a target. And now it's going to the right target. Perfect. Next step, I'm going to do something uh, exciting. Um, if you followed my last tutorial, you'll see that I created a damage system uh, that had a player and an enemy and they can damage each other. Um, now I'm going to take this projectile system and I'm going to integrate it with our damage system to see how you can actually spawn projectiles from a player to an enemy or vice versa. So first thing to know, if you want to move files from one project to another, um, I can right click here on this projectiles folder and say uh, migrate. Now this is going to see all of the dependencies that this uh, uh, that these classes have. So it's depending on the infinity blade, paragon, blah, blah, blah and it's going to uh, migrate them to a different project. Um, for example, the other project already has starter content, so I'm not gonna choose that one. Um, I don't want the enemy, for example, that was just for show. Uh, you can also say, yeah, maybe I don't want this projectile shooter, it was also a demo. So yeah, you get the idea, you can choose what you want. Then if you click OK, uh, it's going to ask you to find the content folder of the, where you want to put it. So if I go here, find damage system tutorial, then I can select the content folder. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. 
Um, but if I go over here to my damage system, uh, by the way, let me close these because it's uh, slowing things down. So if I go over here to my damage system, whoa, I can see that I have my projectiles folder with all the things that I created. So the damage system tutorial just covered how to create an enemy and the player and the player and the enemy can damage each other like this and then uh, they can kill each other as well. And I can heal and things like that. But the attacking was just done by doing a sphere trace. As you can see here, when I click, it just does a sphere trace. Now I'm going to replace this sphere trace with spawning a projectile and see how we can actually start damaging the enemy. So I'm gonna go over here to my uh, damage system to my player class. And over here, when I click the left mouse button, I do the sphere. And then if the sphere hits something, I call take damage uh, on the something that I hit. Now, instead of doing a sphere trace, I'm actually going to spawn a projectile. So I'm gonna delete all of this. And just here, I'm gonna say spawn actor from class. And this class is going to be our projectile. Now I can select any one of these uh, projectiles, uh, but I want it to be uh, a random selection. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go here and pull a select node. Uh, just refresh this to remove the errors. And in the select node, uh, I'm going to select the first option to be our projectile arrow. Second one would be our um, dark energy. And the third one will be our ice. So we have three options here to select from and the index will define which one will be selected. So index zero will select this one, one and so on. So I'm just gonna get a random integer random integer oh. <clears throat> uh, between zero and three, because this says it's uh, between zero and max minus one. So three is gonna be the max. Um, now the problem is here, I can't actually set the, um, uh, the variables of the uh, base uh, projectile. This is because this node is of type actor class. So if you right click here and say, um, uh, we should be able to change the pin type. Yeah, so if I just remove this and right click here and change pin type to be our base projectile class reference. Now we have access to all of our things here. Nice. <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep everything as a default, maybe just make it a bit faster. Like yeah, a thousand, gravity zero, no target, no homing, everything's the same. Um, we do want to add an owner though, because if you recall, well, um, owner is reference to self. Uh, this is how we uh, ignore collision. Um, let's, let me actually remind you, because this is gonna be important. So our projectile base, <clears throat> if you recall here, um, we set uh, ignore actor while moving uh, to be our owner. Uh, this is uh, something added, extra I added, uh, either owner or instigator. Uh, if instigator is valid, it uses that. If not, it uses owner, but it doesn't matter. The main thing is that we ignore uh, the owner uh, from our collision. So we don't actually accidentally collide with the actor that spawned uh, the projectile. Um, it's not gonna work exactly, but you, you'll, you'll see in a bit. So. Now, after spawning this, uh, one thing to remember also is that we have this uh, event that we dispatched. Uh, I actually called it on projectile impact. So this on projectile impact was called right here uh, when we collided. Um, so back to our player, we can bind to this event. So we can say bind uh, so I pull off of the actor that we just spawned, the projectile, and I say bind to on projectile impact. Now this will give us an event. So I'm gonna oh, just move these things a bit here. So I'm gonna create a custom event <clears throat> called um, damage enemy, for example. 
and we have the actor and the hit results. So the hit results, I'm just gonna put them here, uh, and the actor, I'm going to plug it to our take damage here. And plug this here. Um, I don't need to spawn an emitter because this is already being handled by the projectile. And this take damage is something that we covered in the uh, damage system tutorial. So I'm not gonna go over this one. Um, all right, so let's see if this works. Oh, I got some errors. Oh, I forgot to add a transform. So this transform is where do we actually spawn this uh, projectile from? In my viewport, I want it to spawn like maybe somewhere here around the stomach or chest. So I'm gonna click on my mesh and say add scene. Click on this last one scene. And this is just uh, a scene component where we can get the transform of, it doesn't actually do anything in game. I already have it, so I'm not going to create another one. Uh, but how we use this scene component is that uh, in our event graph here, we get this scene and get world transform. <clears throat> and that's gonna be the transform that we'll be using. Uh, compile again. Uh, we still have some errors because I didn't compile this one. Great. Now everything looks good. So let's play and see what this looks like. Now if I click, it should spawn a projectile. And it's doing that. But you'll notice that the projectile is also colliding with the player. And I'm taking damage. So why is it colliding with the player since we have this ignore actor while moving. Well, if you hover here, uh, you'll notice that um, what the description says tells this component whether to ignore collision with uh, all components of a specific actor. Um, second line says components on the actor may also need to do, uh, to be told to do the same when they move. That means that in our player, we also need to ignore collision as well. So off of our spawned projectile here, uh, we're going to say ignore actor while moving, choose our box collision. Oh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm doing it the opposite direction. Um, off of our capsule here, uh, we want to say ignore actor while moving. And the actor we want to ignore is the projectile we just spawned. Tidy this up a bit. Great. Oh, and should ignore is true. Now, it shouldn't collide with the player anymore. Yes, perfect. And if I aim it at the enemy, enemy's taking damage and enemy dies. Awesome. And this is how you would uh, implement uh, this system in an actual game. Um, now I can show you how the other things will work as well. Um, let's say here, we want a target. Um, I'm gonna create another, let's move this down a bit. So on right mouse button, if right mouse button is pressed, then uh, get actor of class enemy and promote that to variable. This is going to be our target. Uh, I already did that before, so <laughs> I forgot that I already created this variable. Oh. So I'm just going to set our target here. And once I release the right mouse button, set the target back to nothing. And here it's going to use our target that we just created. So if the right mouse button is pressed, we're going to be targeting the enemy, otherwise we're not. So let me test it out here. Right now I'm not pressing the right mouse button, so it's going wherever I'm looking at. Now I'm pressing it, so it's going right to the enemy. That's how targeting works, nice. Perfect. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider giving a like and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna try to do tutorials every week or two, so if you have an idea or a specific tutorial that you want me to do, please leave in the comments below. Thank you.